Magic Duels. Hello everyone, my name is Steven George and I play video games and I'm very excited to say that today the video game has everything to do with Magic the Gathering. Now before we get too far into this, let me say a huge shout out and quick thank you to everyone who supported us over on Patreon.com. The names of the Patreon producers are scrolling up on the right side of the screen now. Thank you guys so much. Not just to the producers, but to everyone who chooses to support us on Patreon. If you're watching right now and you'd like to learn more, there will be a card appearing on screen shortly. And there's also a link in the description. Click that link, it'll take you over to our Patreon page. You can learn more about how you can directly support Mal and myself, and also the perks that come along with that. So. Magic the Gathering is a big deal to me. I started playing the card game in 2009, and I instantly fell in love with it. Um, I decided to do a Let's Play of Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers, which was the first Duels of the Planeswalkers game, a few years ago on Steven Plays. And ever since that Let's Play ended, I've been asked, probably on a monthly basis, when was Magic going to return to the channel? I'm very excited to say that day is today. Now, Magic has been releasing Duels of the Planeswalker games annually for the last few years, but um, this is the first time that they've decided to go free-to-play. So what you're watching right now is a free-to-play game. Seems that they've taken some hints from games like Hearthstone and decided that the free-to-play model might be the best direction. There is no paywall. You can certainly pay money if you wish, but everything that can possibly be uh, had in the game can be earned. You don't have to actually pay any money. So if you'd like to get this game yourself, it's available on Xbox One, uh, PC for, through Steam, and then also iOS devices. So today we're going to be starting out uh, and igniting our Planeswalker Spark. This is probably going to be pretty tutorial heavy at the beginning, but this is going to be a really good way for you guys to learn magic. I know that some of you watching are probably uh, experienced magic players. I know that we have quite a few on the channel. Uh, but some others may be interested in playing the game, whether it be Duels of the Planeswalkers, Magic Online, or the physical card game. So this is where you can learn. You can either download the game and play it yourself, you can watch me play through some of the tutorials here, and you're going to learn actually how to play uh, the Magic the Gathering card game. So let's start at story mode. Magic is power. It has the capacity to create and destroy. Manipulate and transform. It can shatter the very laws that govern each world. The infinite planes of the multiverse are home to countless mages. Yet for all their mastery over their craft, they are each bound to their own planes of reality, blind to the true vastness of the multiverse. But some mages are born with a potential for more. The spark, this gift realized only upon facing a great ordeal. Once ignited, it allows the mage to travel between planes and draw from each plane's magic to reach heights of power otherwise impossible to achieve. They can begin their journey as a planeswalker. So one of the interesting things um, that this game does uh, is it's not only teaching you how to play Magic, but it's also jumping into a lot of the lore behind Magic, um, which is something a lot of players, at least I myself when I played competitively, did not think about. Uh, now this is operating on a free-to-play system, so there's coins, so as we go through the skill quest to kind of learn how to play Magic, we're going to be earning coins that we can eventually use on booster packs. Skill Quest, The Basics. Learn the basics of magic to prepare you for the adventures ahead and unlock Story Mode, where you can uncover the origins of powerful planeswalkers. Let's get started then. Your training begins. Learn the basics of magic duels in these fun and rewarding skill quests. So there are gonna be quite a few tutorials that we go through, um, but they will teach you how to play Magic the Gathering. And if you've ever uh, looked at the Magic the Gathering card and been confused, this should help clear all of that up. You should now be educated in magic, and you'll uh, be able to understand uh, relatively what people are doing whenever you see, uh, you know, people playing the card game. And that's pretty cool. I'm not sure what art that is, but that's really sweet. Welcome to Magic Duels. You are a planeswalker, a powerful mage dueling across the myriad worlds of the multiverse. You're darn right I am. 
Your story starts with these skill quests. Challenges designed to hone your skills and prepare you for combat. If you'd like to replay a skill quest, you can do so from the Help and Options menu. Each player starts with a shuffled deck of cards called a library. Your library contains the creatures and other spells you'll need to defeat your foe. Each turn, you draw a card from your library into your hand. Only you can see the cards in your hand. You win the game by reducing your opponent's life total from 20 to 0. Zoom in on any card by using the right trigger. Try it now. While zoomed in on a card, you can learn more about its abilities in the More Info box on the right. Zoom out by using the right trigger again to complete this skill quest. Good job! You can zoom in on cards anywhere to learn more about them. We did it, you guys. We beat the game. But hopefully that starts to explain some of the basics uh, of magic. In this skill quest, you'll learn how to attack with your creatures to reduce your opponent's life total. A creature deals damage equal to its power, the first number in the lower right corner. When a creature attacks, it becomes tapped or turned sideways. This shows it's been used for the turn. Your tapped cards will untap at the start of your turn. To complete this skill quest, finish off your opponent this turn. For each creature you want to attack with, use the left stick to highlight it and press the A button. You can attack with all of your creatures by pressing the X button. After you've chosen which creatures to attack with, press the Y button to confirm your attack. So it should be pretty straightforward, but you'll see that this Elvis Warrior has a power of two. That's the number on the left in the bottom right corner. Two power, three toughness. It's kind of like the health. Now we've got two of them, and you'll see that over on the top right there, our opponent only has four health. You start with 20, but it's down to four. Therefore, if we swing with everything, we will potentially do four damage and uh, win the game. So that's one attacking for two, and the other attacking for two. Excellent! Attacking with your creatures is one of the surest ways to win. In the next skill quest, you'll learn how to defend yourself from your opponent's attacks. Which is pretty important. Um, there's a lot of intricacies to Magic the Gathering. When I was younger, I played the Pokemon trading card game, and moving from that to Magic was a little dizzying. Your untapped creatures can block your opponent's attacking creatures. A blocked creature won't deal damage to you. Instead, it will deal damage to the creature that blocked it, and your creature will deal damage to the attacking creature. A creature is destroyed if it's dealt damage in a single turn equal to its toughness, the second number in the lower right corner. To complete this skill quest, survive your opponent's turn, and then win the game on your turn. All right, so we're going into the attack phase for the opponent, and uh, he's gonna declare attackers. To block an incoming attack, first use the left stick to highlight one of your creatures and press the A button. Then highlight the attacking creature you want to block and press the A button again. Once you've selected each creature you want to block with, press the Y button to confirm your block. Okay, so I can uh, choose this guy as a blocker. And then I can choose who I want to block. Now I've only got six health. So if I block the 2-3, I will die, because the 6-4 will deal 6 damage. So I don't really have a choice here. I have to block the 6-4. Confirm block. I take 2 damage. And I lose my Goblin Piker. But I'm alive. Great job! By blocking the more dangerous creature, you survived the assault. Now it's your turn. First, play the land card you just drew. Playing more lands allows you to cast more powerful spells. Did it. 
Now attack and win the game. So we're going to declare this as an attacker. This guy is a 5-4, so he's going to do 5 damage. Confirm attack. No blockers. Swing for 5. Excellent. Remember, only untapped creatures can block. Now that you've seen creatures attacking and blocking, let's find out how to summon them to the battlefield. Which, as you probably suspected, is incredibly important in the game of Magic the Gathering, a game about creatures. To cast a spell, you need mana, the magical energy produced by your lands. Each of your lands produces one mana when it taps or turns sideways. Tapping shows a card's been used for the turn. To see a spell's mana cost, look in the top right corner of the card. For example, Elvish Warrior's mana cost is two green mana. To cast Lightning Elemental, you need one red mana. Your mountain produces that. You also need three other mana of any kind. Any lands can be tapped to produce this three mana. After you cast a creature spell, that creature goes to the battlefield. Creatures can't attack on the turn they're summoned. This is called summoning sickness, and it's indicated by a swirling effect. A creature with summoning sickness can still block incoming attacks. A few creatures have an ability called haste. Creatures with haste aren't affected by summoning sickness. In this skill quest, we'll start on your opponent's turn. To complete it, win the game on your next turn. I think we could do that. So the opponent is putting an Elvish Warrior into play. Going to the attack phase. Your Elvish Warrior can't block this turn because it's tapped. The creature your opponent just summoned can't attack this turn, but it will be able to block on your next turn. So, swinging for four, I have no way to block, so I am going to go from six down to two health. Not a lot of health, but I'm sure things will look up soon. My turn. You can summon creatures to the battlefield from your hand by casting creature spells. To cast a spell in your hand, use the left stick to highlight it and press the A button. So we've got some options here. Uh, we can cast Elvish Warrior, which is a 2-3. We also have enough mana to cast Lightning Elemental, which is a haste for one. Let's play this out in our mind. If we cast the uh, if we, we if we cast Elvish Warrior, we'll have um, two two threes. But the one we just cast can't attack, which means that all we could possibly do is attack with the other Elvish Warrior, another two three. The problem is he's got the two three and he'll block us. But if we cast the Lightning Elemental, Creatures with haste are not affected by summoning sickness. They can tap and attack the turn that they enter the battlefield. So now we've entered attack. Now, you'll notice that when we go to attack with uh, these creatures, he's going to have to block with something. Because if he doesn't, he's going to die. He's only got two health. But the thing is, when we go to attack with both, He's going to automatically block the bigger creature, but it doesn't matter. We're swinging with both, so he's going to take two no matter what. And we won. Well done. All your tapped cards, including lands and creatures, will untap at the start of your next turn, ready to be used again. Fantastic. For completing this skill quest, you've earned some coins. After you finish Gideon's campaign, you can spend coins in the store to purchase booster packs containing new cards for your collection. So the game is divided up into five Planeswalker uh, campaigns, if you will. First up is Gideon Jura, who is uh, the white planeswalker. Uh, I shouldn't say the. There are multiple planeswalkers in the color of white, but 
for this particular game, it's Gideon Jura. Before you took the name Gideon Jura, you were uh, Kytheon Iora, a 13-year-old kid from the slums of Akros on the plain of Theros. You possess a strong sense of justice, and your magic makes you resilient to physical harm. This combination leads you to speak more with actions than with words. Now, once again, not only are we going to be learning how to play Magic the Gathering in this series, you're also going to be taking in some of the lore, and that's pretty neat. Without further ado, let's jump in to Gideon Jura. Kytheon Iora. You lead a small group of street toughs known as Kytheon's Irregulars. Together, you act as a force for justice and charity in the slums. While raiding, raiding an Akroan estate for food, you draw the attention of the city guards. So we're going to earn 10 coins for completing this. Let's get started. It's really cool art, actually. Uh, I'm not sure if this art is based off of some of the more recent Magic cards, because I'm going to be honest, I haven't played Magic you know, competitively or kept up with the scene in a long time. Still very much enjoy the game. Uh, and still play casually from time to time with friends, uh, but I'm not sure if this is, like, a newer card or not. My luck, it'll be an older card, and everyone will be like, You idiot! First duel, welcome to your first magic duel. Apply what you have learned in the skills quests to defeat your opponent. Kytheon versus the Akroan Guards. Your turn! In Magic Duels, cards will glow when you are able to use them. If you are stuck for what to do, a hint arrow will appear after a couple seconds to help guide you. Alright, so, uh, 20 and 20. Obviously, the goal of Magic is to decrease the health from 20 to 0. We can't start playing cards until we start getting some land. Land is going to produce our mana, but you knew all this because you watched the tutorial. Play card. And then continue. Uh, with playing a creature. Our options are Elite Vanguard, who is just a simple 2-1, and Glory Seeker, which is a 2-2. Two -two. And you'll notice that this costs two mana to play, one white and one of any color. So we only have one uh, land, because you can only play one land a turn, so we're going to put in Elite Vanguard. With any luck, we'll do fine. There's the attack phase, but we can't attack because we have a creature that has summoning sickness gonna hit don't show this again because I think by this point you guys are aware of that. Opponent's turn. He's laying a planes. And ending his turn. Our turn. Okay. Uh, so we're going to put down uh, yet another planes. So now we have some more options. We can play the Oresco Swift Claw, which is a 3-1. We can also play Glory Seeker, which is a 2-2. And of course, we could play down uh, an Elite Vanguard if we truly wanted to. I think that I would rather get a guy on the board who can do more damage uh, more quickly. So let's play our Cat Warrior, Oresco Swift Claw. It resolves and enters the battlefield. Now we enter the attack phase. He's got nothing to guard with, so we are going to go ahead and attack with our Elite Vanguard. Confirm attack. We'll see how things go for him. Enters block phase, but obviously he can't block, so he takes 2 damage, going down to 18. We also have an end phase, but we can't do anything because we don't have any untapped mana. Okay, entering main. He's playing Traveling Philosopher, which is just a 2-2 creature. Okay, sure. Now the 2-2 creature we got to be a little careful about. Because it can kill our guys, and that would be bad. Uh, let's go ahead and play another land card. Now, we can actually play two creatures this turn. Uh, we'll be able to play a Glory Seeker and an Elite Vanguard, and I vote that we do that. So let's start with the Glory Seeker. And then play the Elite Vanguard. Now, at this point, it's really how we want to play the game. We're entering the attack step, and uh, the game is trying to guide us with arrows and trying to advise us about what we can do. We could skip attack if we want. We are not obligated to attack. We've got two creatures that aren't summoning sick, but it's very reasonable that he may try and block us with his 2-2. Probably not the best play, because he's going to lose it, but that might be what he wants to do. Now, it makes more sense, if we assume he's going to block our creature and we're and we're going to lose one, to attack with the Elite Vanguard, because it's a 2-1. If we attack with this guy, 
uh, they would trade, meaning that our guy would kill his 2-2, and uh, his 2-2 would kill our 3-1. So we're just going to attack with the Elite Vanguard for now. Confirm attack. We'll see what he decides to do. Block. He's going for it. And we trade. The thing is, I only paid one, uh, one mana for my Elite Vanguard. He paid two for his Philosopher. I've got extreme board advantage because I now have three creatures out. But he is playing a Glory Seeker of his own. That's a 2-2. Two -two. He's also playing the Valiant Guard, which is a 0-3. So it's not going to do any damage to us, but it can, it, it can withstand a good bit of damage. Not a big problem. It's our turn. Flying. Creatures with flying can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. Okay? There's also a skill quest for this, but I don't think it's necessary, so we'll just hit Don't Show Again. And uh, as it said, this is a flying creature, and it's just like it says. If, uh, if I have a flying creature and I attack my opponent, they can only block that creature if the creature has flying or another ability called reach, which is basically a ground creature that can reach high up in the air. This creature also has vigilance. Vigilance just means that when I choose to attack with it, it doesn't make it tap. If it doesn't tap, that means it can also block, which is helpful. So we've got a bird, and that's going to help us out because we can just soar over everyone else and start doing some damage. Now we also have a plane, so let's go ahead and put that down. And uh, our options are Ego of the Watch and Glory Seeker. I say we go ahead and get this guy into play so we can start using him next turn. It resolves and enters the battlefield. Now we enter the attack step. So who should I attack with? The game thinks I should attack with everyone. Which honestly isn't a terrible idea. The 0-3 isn't going to kill any of my creatures. Uh, the 2-2 can kill all of my creatures, and it's probably going to go for the 3-1. But next turn we're going to have a flyer, and we're going to be doing some damage to this guy anyway. Uh, if he blocks the 3-1 and a 2-2, he's going to take 2 damage. And we're going to lose one guy, but he's going to lose a guy too. I think that that's not a bad idea. Let's attack with all. Confirm attack. Let's see how he blocks. Okay. So, one of my Glory Seekers goes through. He goes down to 16. These guys are going to trade. And the Elite Vanguard's going to hit the uh, Valiant Guard doing nothing. We each lose a creature, but he loses two health. And I've got a bird. I feel pretty good right now. Opponent's turn. Nothing. Not so good for him. We've also managed to get another Swift Claw. So we're going to put the Swift Claw and the Glory Seeker out onto the field. That's not always a great strategy to have no cards in hand because in real magic, your opponent will know that you have no tricks up your sleeve. But this is a CPU and I doubt that they're that bright. Um, so the other guy can't hurt us right now. He can do no damage to us because he's got a 0-3, unless he's got something up his sleeves, which I don't think he does. So we're going to attack with everyone. Confirm attack. Boom. He's choosing to block the 2-1, and damage is done. Now, one of the things you have to remember in Magic that seems to be difficult for new players is that you are never attacking creatures. You are attacking the player. The opposing player chooses to block or not, and if they block, where they block. So, I'm never attacking that guard on the other side. I'm attacking the player who has 12 health. If the player with 12 health wants to choose to do things, they want to choose to block, that's on them. It's my turn. I've drawn another bird. Yes, please. Things are going pretty good for us right now. Enter the attack phase. They've got a 2-2. Does it matter? We can probably overwhelm them at this point. They're going to block a 3 and a 2, which means they're going to take 6 damage. So let's go ahead and attack with all. We still have another bird on the way. I'm not concerned at all. Going to set up some blocks. The 3-1 and the 2-2 will trade. And my Elite Vanguard 2-1 will not quite kill the uh, the Valiant Guard. Got him down to 6. 
Doesn't kill the Valiant Guard. These guys trade. Fine by me. Still have extreme board advantage here. Let's see if he's got anything cool coming up. Another 2-2. Two -two. Unfortunately, that is not going to be enough to win the game. You guys can probably already see it now. But if he blocks two of my guys, I still have got three guys that'll do two each. That is six damage, meaning we have won the game. We have another Glory Seeker that we can put in. But it's not really necessary. We'll be able to go ahead and attack. So let's do attack with all. Confirm the attack. Of course he's going to set up blockers, but we've got two flyers and then another guy that's getting through. Not looking good, buddy. Even though we've already killed him, it's going to show us the animations for the other cards. And that's that. We won! And we're given 10 coins for that. Woo! We can even choose to view the battlefield at the end if we'd like. Look around and see uh, what we want to see. Cool! Good job, us! Next, team roll. Reduce your opponent's life total to 10 or less before your fifth turn. Oh, we we got like a special achievement. And frenzied. Starting on your third turn, attack every turn until you win. Yeah, that's the way I play. It's the red deck wins way. You fight your way out of your hideout. But you realize continued resistance will put your friends at risk. You lay down your weapons and the guards haul you off to the dungeons. You are sentenced to 10 years for thievery. Ouch. That means we unlock the next one, which will allow us to uh, to potentially earn 20 coins if we can do it. That's going to be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, that is just the start of what uh, Magic Duels has to offer. Hopefully you guys are, are interested. Uh, I know that it may be a little slow for old-time Magic players who have been playing for a long time. Uh, but I think that things will definitely speed up, especially by the end of this little story arc. For everyone else who is just kind of getting into Magic and learning the game, hopefully you are starting to learn the basics. There's still a lot more stuff to cover, and I'm sure the game is going to do a great job of explaining it uh, thoroughly as we get there. And I'll be doing my best to give you guys tips and tricks along the way. And certainly if you have any questions about Magic, I or someone else who is knowledgeable will be able to assist you in the comments if you just leave a comment below. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for another Stephen Plays Magic Duels.